Hello, and welcome to The Daily Atheist. Today, we're going to cover the top 10 reasons Mother Teresa was no saint. Also, at the end of this video, I'll make a surprising concession about Mother Teresa. Stick around. Okay, before we get too far along, I need to warn you that a gaggle of angry nuns will club you like a baby harp seal, then leave you to suffer and die a miserable death, unless you click that subscribe button. Then hit that little notification bell. Do it now. Be safe, my friends. Now, on with the show. First, I want to thank Carl Merritt, the liberal atheist comedian, as well as Randall Theo from the DFW chapter of the Freedom From Religion Foundation for the idea of doing a show on Mother Teresa. They did a show recently about her, which I'll link in the description below, which was quite interesting. Also, I need to give credit to the late, great Christopher Hitchens for his original report on Mother Teresa exposing her for all the world to see. I highly recommend you check out that video as well. Uh, again, there's a link in the description. Go check it out. Okay, in case you don't know who Mother Teresa was, she was a Catholic nun who lived from August of 1910 until September of 1997. She's honored as Saint Teresa of Calcutta by the Catholic Church for her missionary work and the deeds she performed throughout her long life. She founded the Missionaries of Charity Congregation, which created and manages a series of homes for the dying to help the poor and dying, primarily in India. Um, she has ministered to the rich and the poor and to the pious and to the corrupt alike. She was also quite quotable. Here are just a couple of her quotes. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. Joy is a net of love in which you can catch souls. But she's also quoted as saying, there is something beautiful in seeing the poor accept their lot, to suffer it like Christ's passion. But don't worry, we'll get to that part. Now, on to our list. Starting out at number 10, she would baptize dying people against their will. According to the Christopher Hitchens report, as well as other corroborating sources, Mother Teresa encouraged her nuns to secretly baptize patients against their will on their deathbed. Not that this is a big issue to an atheist, like myself, but Muslims and Hindus and others who were on their deathbed were unknowingly baptized against their will. Again, not such a big deal if you don't believe in all that mess, but if you're a believer of a different faith, this is extremely significant. Number nine on our list, she allegedly took over a million dollars from Charles Keating. Charles Keating was a financier who was involved in the savings and loan crisis back in the 90s and who was eventually convicted of fraud. Of course, this money vanished mysteriously with the rest. And speaking of money. Number eight, she hoarded gold like a dragon. She and her charity were dripping with donated money, which was never used, while the poor sat dying in pain due to lack of needed medication, which she could easily have afforded. While she received literally billions in donations from all across the world, her houses for the poor were little better than hovels. In 2017, uh, a book was published titled Original Sin by an investigative journalist, Giuliani Gianluigi. Gianluigi, Gianluigi Nuzzi, revealed that hers was the largest account held by the Vatican Bank, totaling in the billions, billions of dollars, by the way, which sit in the Vatican's vault and help no one. Number seven is her fascination with suffering. Her notion that suffering is good for the soul was the basis for the suffering of countless poor and indigent people who could have been saved, or at the very least had their suffering lessened by the application of actual medicine. Instead, on most occasions, no medication was given. There is something beautiful in seeing the poor accept their lot, remember? To suffer it like Christ's passion, remember? Mother Teresa said, the world gains much from their suffering. So she relished in the misery and deaths of thousands of people, yet she's considered a saint. A saint, by the way, in the church of the God of death, so it's no surprise, really. Number six, her stance on abortion and birth control hurt women for generations. She was against both abortion and birth control, even when it came to the pregnant rape victims of servient militants. Her response was to condemn the notion of an abortion, not the rape. But abortion and the defense of the unborn fetus was one of the clarion calls she used to help swell the ranks of the church. And she blew that clarion over and over, no matter how many women were harmed. 
Number five on our list is her dogmatic yet shifting views on divorce. She was against divorce, as is probably expected when a member of the Catholic Church. But when it came to Charles and Princess Diana's divorce, she's quoted as saying, On the British royal divorce, she is such a sad soul. It is good that it is over. Nobody was happy anyhow. I know I should preach family, love, and unity, but in their case... She's also quoted as saying Diana was like a daughter to her, so it's okay for her daughter to leave an unhappy relationship. But when it comes to everyone else, her advice is for you to go home and fix your family. Number four on our list, she ran with dictators and crooks. While people lay suffering and dying in her death camps, Mother Teresa was known to consort with murderous dictators, like Claude de Veillé of Haiti, a man known for the kidnapping, torture, and murder of his own people. A match made in hell, really. She never rebuked him publicly, but she did take his money. I guess there's nothing like being the spiritual advisor to a man charged with crimes against humanity to up her street cred with the god of death. Number three on our list, she was a hypocrite when it came to suffering. Despite her love of the suffering of the poor and others, Mother Teresa often sought medical help from real doctors and hospitals, both in America and back in India, when she had medical needs. When she had heart issues, for example, rather than lay down in squalor and die in one of her death camps, she sought medical help in a fancy modern American hospital in California. Here's Number two on our list is something we've mentioned several times, and that's the horrible condition of her uh, homes for the dying or death camps. There are several reports, including video evidence, which back up these claims. Despite having billions in funds, these homes for the dying were dilapidated, underfunded, and understaffed. In fact, the untrained staff was doing medical work and procedures without proper sanitation or of the equipment or training. In a paper published in 2012 by the University of Ottawa detailing the crimes of Mother Teresa, it was stated that when doctors visited her missions, they reportedly discovered one-third of her patients lay dying without receiving appropriate care. Quoting an article from TheVice.com, the conditions in her missions were so dire, in fact, that they were once compared to photographs of a Nazi concentration camp. And number one on our list for reasons why Mother Teresa was no saint is because she helped spread the AIDS virus. She was against the AIDS virus, of course, but she was more against the use of condoms. Between her and Pope John Paul II, who preached against the use of condoms as a method to fight AIDS, they are quite possibly directly responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions, uh, of, pe of people across Africa. And here's a surprising concession on my part. I know this is going to sound strange coming from an atheist, but I don't really think she meant any harm per se. When viewed through the optics of modern secular morals about abortion, hospice care, AIDS, condoms, etc., she might seem like something of a monster, to be honest. But my belief is that she truly believed what she was doing was good and holy. I don't think she sat around twisting her evil mustache and complaining about those pesky kids who spoiled her dastardly plots. No, she was just a misguided person of faith who was given too much credence, too much power, and who didn't know what to do with it once she got it. I mean, we can talk about all the money she had, but how many mansions did she own? Private jets, Rolls Royces, none in that sense. Yes, in her later years, she did get the rock star treatment from the Catholic Church, but really most of her life was spent in service. All her money was in the Vatican vault. But still, her misguided notions about abortion, AIDS, and condoms alone were enough to cause the harm and deaths of literally hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people. Innocent, no. Ignorant, maybe. Maybe not. But if she had even an inkling of the true harm she was doing, she truly would be a monster. Ignorance, in fact, would be her only saving grace. And that's our list of top 10 reasons Mother Teresa is no saint. What do you think? Was there something she did that should have made it on my list? Let me know in the comments below. Also, there's some merch that uh, I'm going to have up and ready soon. Hopefully you'll enjoy that. Some t-shirts and mugs. Yes, it's going to be fun. Thank you again for watching. You guys are awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thumbs up to you guys. You're wonderful. And remember, subscribe and hit that little not notification bell or a gaggle of nuns. Gaggle. Nuns. Take care.